Windows Small Business Server 2003 includes several components that take advantage of SharePoint services. Unfortunately, these components take advantage of SharePoint Services 2.0, and at this time Microsoft does not support updating those to SharePoint 3.0. The two main pieces that we have to worry about is if I open up my browser and navigate to HTTP Company Web. This is a SharePoint 2.0 site that Microsoft has built on their server, including some that you know has links for remote email and remote server management and a basic SharePoint site set up, as well as one that's located at HTTP and the name of the server. And so in my case, my server is called SBS SRV1. And here we see there's some links for the company's internal website and some network configuration wizards and uh, some information and answers about SharePoint. Now, at this time, Microsoft does not support upgrading this particular SharePoint site to 3.0. If you attempt to do a complete upgrade to SharePoint 3.0, you will break all these functions of small business server. And at that point, Microsoft won't be able to support you with any additional features or issues or anything like that you have. So, does that say we can't use small business server 2003 and SharePoint 3.0 services? Absolutely not. We can actually use it just fine. We just have to run it in parallel with SharePoint 2.0. This site and the company website will remain on SharePoint 2.0, but we can introduce a new site that we can allow our users to access and things like that running under SharePoint 3.0 by doing an installation in parallel with the current SharePoint. So let's take a look at how to do that. Now, the first step is you need to make sure you install the .NET Framework 3.0. And if you haven't installed that already, you'll need to install that on your SharePoint site, or sorry, on your small business server. The easiest way to do that is to do a Windows update and add the optional components. I'm going to assume you've done that. And so what I'm going to do is I have downloaded onto my C drive here into a folder called software, I've downloaded the SharePoint 3.0 executable. So I'm going to go ahead and double click that, run it where it's going to extract it, and begin my SharePoint installation. Okay, so we need to agree to the licensing and click continue. And here's the most critical part about it. We can perform an automated in-place upgrade all websites and databases will be upgraded. The process will continue until complete. This is best for installations with few databases and less than 30 gig of content. What they really need to say there is do not do this option on small business server because this would upgrade the existing SharePoint sites, which breaks the integration with SharePoint. Instead, we need to choose the option, no, do not upgrade at this time the new version can be installed alongside or what we call in parallel to the existing product and could run without impacting the old installation. So that's what we want. Okay, now if we look at the server type, we need to be set to a standalone because chances are if you're doing a small business server, you've just got this one server running all this stuff. And so we're interested in a standalone option. The data locations, the default location will be just fine. And you can choose uh, as far as feedback. I'm going to select no. I don't want to provide any feedback on my experience with SharePoint. Okay, so we're on no. Do not upgrade at this time. And we're going to click install now. And it will complete a parallel installation of SharePoint. I'll fast forward over this so we don't have to watch too much of it happen. And we'll be back at the next shot, uh, prompt I have. Well, SharePoint has now been installed, so SharePoint 3.0 is now installed in parallel with SharePoint 2.0. And what we want to do is we want to run the SharePoint Products and Technology Configuration Wizard. So we'll click Close, and the SharePoint Products and Technology Wizard should start up. And I can close that window while I'm at it. Okay, so the wizard will configure our SharePoint's products and technologies. We'll click Next. And now it's telling me, hey, it's going to shut down IIS and SharePoint Administrator Service and the Timer Service. So we'll go ahead and say yes. Now, during this time, your SharePoint 2.0 sites will also be offline. 
but that shouldn't be a problem. And over the course of the next couple minutes, it'll perform the 10 steps necessary for the configuration wizard. So we'll be right back as soon as those are done. Okay, so the SharePoint configuration wizard is just completed. I'm going to click finish and let's see what the result is. Well, right away we see that it, it's going to open Internet Explorer to SBS SRV1 and give us a default SharePoint site. But if you remember from before we installed SharePoint 3.0, we already had a site sitting on this web page. Let's see if it brings that one up or a brand new one. Uh oh, we got a brand new generic SharePoint 3.0 site. We didn't get the one that was there previously. So that's the first thing that breaks when you install SharePoint on uh, 3.0 on top of a small business server. But that's okay because in the next video in the series, I'm going to go through how to go back and get all those sites back and running under their 2.0 and set up a brand new SharePoint uh, site for your 3.0 content and beyond.